Hi folks, this is Jay, hope you're okay today. We're looking at the story of the Old Testament. We're looking at King David and King Solomon today. And um, <clears throat> So, King Saul um, is the king of Israel. But he becomes jealous of David, a shepherd boy, who became com becomes a musician in David's um, in King Saul's um, palace. And um, then we have the story of uh, David and Goliath, do you remember that, uh, in 1 Samuel 17? Uh, now the Philistines had gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at uh, Sokoth, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Sokoth and Azek and in Es and Damon and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the valley of Ella and drew up in battle array against the Philistines and the Philistines stood on a mountain on the side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them and a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath whose height was six cubits in a span he had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze and he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed six hundred shekels. The shield-bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel, and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me, and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him, and kill him then you shall be our servants and and serve us the philistine said i defy the armies of israel this day give me a man that may fight together when saul and all israel heard these words of the philistines they were dismayed and greatly afraid now david was the son of that emephorite of bethlehem judah whose name was jesse and who had eight sons and the man was old advanced in years in the days of saul the three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to battle. The name of his three sons who went to battle were Elab, the firstborn next to him, Abinadab, and third, Shammah. And David was the youngest, and three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. The Philistines drew near and presented himself forty days, morning and evening morning and evening then jesse said to his son david take now for your brothers an ephah of dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of the thousand and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them now saul and they and all the men of israel were in the valley of elah fighting with the philistines so david rose early in the morning left the sheep with the keeper and took the things and went as jesse had commanded him he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them and all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will en enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. And David spoke in to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Elab, his older brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Elab's anger was aroused against David and said, Why do you come down here, and with whom you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what I have done now, what have I done now, is there not a cause? Then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing. These people answered him and the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. 
Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And so the story of uh, David fighting Goliath with five stones and Goliath the great soldier comes and David gets his stone and shoots it and it hits the forehead of Goliath and kills him outright. Which is a story of when the enemies of God are, uh, are strong, you've got to have David who will stand up in the power of God against the enemies. So you better stand up, Christian, and not fear the enemies of God today. So anyhow, in 1 Samuel 17, we have the life of David and Goliath there. The battle of David and Goliath. Then David becomes king in 2 Samuel 5. Then we have that great passage where David falls into sin with Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 11. Let's turn to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Just check in for the time. Psalm 51. He says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, and according to your multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. This is David who committed adultery with Bathsheba. King David committed adultery with Bathsheba and he writes for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me against you you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless behold I was brought forth in iniquity purge me with hyssop and, and I shall be clean wash me and I shall be whiter than snow make my Make to make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Create in me a clean heart, O God. So that's King David uh, when he committed uh, adultery with Bathsheba. Then David's son rebels against him in 2 Samuel chapter 15 to 18. Oh, and it's a very tragic time for David where he's chastised by the Lord. And then you have 2 Chronicles chapter 22 when David, King David, gathers the materials for the temple of God. He's going, he's going to help to build a temple. He never gets to build a temple, but God helps him to get the materials to build the temple. And I think we'll leave it there about the life of David and we'll move on the next part to King Solomon. The, the reign of David was about 1 to 5 BC to 985 BC. Oh, and it's a fantastic story. I love David. Oh, David, what a man. Powerful in battle for the Lord. A man with weaknesses and failures, but a man who wrote those Psalms. All oh, those Psalms. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German philosopher, uh, the German theologian, when he was on his last days in prison, about to be executed, oh, he read the Psalms, and the Psalms comforted him. Hallelujah. David, what a man. God bless you.